<coughs> excuse me. Good morning. One more time. <coughs> uh, ate really quick, swallowed something wrong. Uh, so day 13 of Be Positive. How are you guys doing? Uh, that, like I said earlier, we're almost halfway there. And um, I think, you know, as we move on, <laughs> we get uh, people that, that love the idea, just like any anything, any challenge, any goal. You have people that love the idea, and they're really enthusiastic about it. And they start to put in the work, and as their life moves forward, they find that either it fits into their, their lifestyle or they start to find other things that need to be done in its place, and you start to drop off. So today, for our Be Positive Challenge, I just want to share with you some information that I've learned over the past about setting a goal or making changes, and then um, again, ask you to be positive and have fun and share with me your your you know your morning gratitude statement if you want to, or some positive things that have been happening to you. So, on the subject of setting goals or taking on a challenge and sticking with it, anything that can be measured can be mastered. Okay, that's a simple thing to think. Uh, if you can control it, measure it, monitor it, uh, you can master it, and why that exists or why that is that way is you have markable steps that you can see you are, you are achieving and the steps make sense to get you toward your end result. Does that make sense? So the other day I asked you to be clear. Clarity is power. Uh, if we're talking about being positive, the first thing we need to do is define what does it mean to be positive? Because you got to know what it is we're talking about, right? So what does it mean to be positive? Now, um, I have in my life looked at a lot of gurus, looked at a lot of uh, self-help people, a lot of, uh, I don't know, what, what else you call them, uh, coach, life coaches. And um, when they deliver their information, and this is just me, I... I think they want you to feel like they're positive. So what you get is the what I like to call the used car salesman approach. Hey, how's it going out there? I think everybody should be positive today. This is what we're going to do, and everybody's and you know they're really having a beat in your face, and, and it gets your attention. <laughs> but for me, it's off-putting. I appreciate their effort. I appreciate their energy, but to be that much in your face for me just isn't my idea of sincerity. Now, maybe they're sincere. I really don't know. Or maybe they have uh, a publicist that says, this is what you need to do. Follow this program. Follow this diagram. And this will happen for you. Bless their hearts. So is that being positive when you're ah, in people's, you know, is that what it means to you to be positive? I don't know. Let me know. I want to know. If, if that's you, uh, nothing, nothing against it at all. Um, if you're that <coughs> flamboyant, extravagant, <coughs> loud person, I love you. And, um, but I can't sit and listen to you for very long, <laughs> unless we're, unless we're telling jokes, that might be fun. So define what it means to be positive. Okay. Um, boy, was that a negative thought or what? Uh, define what it is first. So you have to be clear on what you want. Unlike me today, what am I clear my, my message about? <coughs> well, that's going to stick with me. Um, be clear on your message. So what can be measured can be mastered. We're looking at how to stick with a program and how to stay focused on our goal. At day 13, I would imagine there are some people that were very excited about this at first that are kind of filtering off for one reason or the other. And some of you that are still very excited about it still may find time. You know, my videos are at weird times or, or maybe they're too long or whatever, but you find excuses to do other things. Not that that's a bad thing. But let's talk about this for a minute. When you set a goal and you find and you define what it is you're looking for and you come up with the why. Remember I asked you, why do you want to be positive? What, why are we doing this challenge? What, what is it about this that excites you or motivates you to keep you looking at the end result? Okay, that's how we focus on a goal. Now, when you have that end result, you have your target set. <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and you know why you want it, you backtrack, okay, and you give yourself little markers. Um, I think by day 20, I want this for myself and others. By day 15, I feel this is where 
things should be, and this is what I would like to know. And then, you know, day 10, day five, day one, so on and so forth. And then you mark them. And if you haven't reached your marker, um, you use sensory acuity to change or alter the course to get you to where you need. You seek out that information. I had a professor in college tell me, you know, when, you, when I was going to take a test or, or when I wanted to learn anything from a book, I was not much of a reader unless it was history. I loved, you know, factual information. Um, <clears throat> he said, read the questions first if they're available to you or write your own questions. What is it do you want to learn from this book? Uh, what have you been told about this subject or situation that interests you? What have you been told about this author or character that interests you? Write some questions down. And as you go forward and read, all the answers will pop up. It's like magic. So knowing your outcome, being clear on it, and knowing what you're going to get along the way helps you stay focused and helps you get what you need, right? And if you can't, sensory acuity will put you back on course. And if you don't understand sensory acuity, uh, talk to me later and I'll, and I'll explain that to you. It's a pretty cool tool. <clears throat> So, why are you? Why do you want to be positive? Um, what does it look like? What does being positive look like to you? And now, when you start a goal, and you and this happens with a lot of kids that start martial arts, they come in thinking it's going to be fun, and it is. Uh, it's going to be you know, and, I, and I'm a goober, I'm a joker. I, I love to have fun in class. So they they come in and they have a good time, and then about two two weeks in, two months in. They start realizing, uh oh, this takes work. This isn't just an automatic game they play and put stripes on. I'm like, well, we're not. An automatic game they play and put stripes on their belt and have fun and they get to be a black belt someday. That's not how it works. There's work involved. And they start to fade. They didn't know. Uh, somebody didn't tell them or, or they just don't want to do that. So they weren't clear on their outcome when they came in. My fault for not setting them up right, right? You got you to gotta let people know what they're in for. So they fade away. Parents, and I'm, I'm using martial arts because it's, it's a big part of my life, but parents who bring their children, you know, and they commit to bringing them twice a week or three times a week or even once a week. And all of a sudden, the kids, you know, they're looking tired. No, they don't want to go. And Mr. Atkins is going to make ask me if I practiced and I didn't practice. And then the parents start figuring, well, this is kind of a chore for me to take them. And people fall off. When, when they first started, they had an intention to change their child's life. Well, you can't do that that way. So the formula for sticking with a goal is simply this. Clarify your outcome. Know your target. Map out a strategy to get there or have somebody help you map out a strategy. And make it easy. Don't make it all convoluted and huge and, and crazy and all these crazy things. And give yourself the opportunity to fail. But if it's easy to follow and it's structured and measurable, as you move forward and you start to lose a little bit of interest or you start to lose a little bit of mov motivation, <laughs> motivation, momentum, if you continue to follow the steps that you know will get you to the next step, the easily measurable steps, it'll carry you through until that motivation or that reason reappears and pretty soon you're picking up momentum and you're on your way again so why are we doing this i do it for the connections um i do it i got little virus things popped up here <laughs> i do it because i love to learn uh, this helps me i get to see what you guys are doing and and knowing that you guys are doing great or that you guys are looking to change your life fills me up it makes me happy um it makes me positive so this is why I do this. I love to share. I love to teach. So I know what I'm doing here. What are you doing here? Okay, so make it measurable, make it easy, and master it. Sounds good, right? So today, I'm going to ask you to do something kind of hard. Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world, so we're going to take the whole weekend to do it, okay? Today's Saturday, right? Wow, boy, it came up quick. Um. Take the whole weekend to do this. <clears throat> there, in one in one area of your life, hold on, guys. You're not as happy as you would be in, in the other areas. Everybody's got something they're not as ha not happy with. Uh, this is straight out of Tony Robbins' stuff. Okay. The reason for your unhappiness is either your paradigm or your life conditions and your blueprint. 
uh, your blueprint, Tony Robbins considers your blueprint as what you think your life should be. And you've heard me say this before, people shoot all over themselves. So certain people have a paradigm about what life really is and, or how it should be. And they have a blueprint of where they should be right now. Oh, I should have a big house and this much money and this type of relationship. And my kids should be doing great. And if one of those things aren't exactly the way their blueprint is, there's unease or dis-ease or they're not happy. Okay. So while there's really no true blueprint for happiness or being positive all the time, um, there is a measurable course. So I want you to look at the area of your life that you're not the happiest in. You can reframe it and be positive about the things that you've learned from the trials, the things that you've learned from, you know, uh, the lessons, the hardships, or you can adjust it. Now, the way you fix it or adjust it would be, according to Tony Robbins, and I, I love this stuff, um, change your blueprint or change your life conditions. I know it sounds easy, right? So if your blueprint is, you know, and I, I think it was, let's see if I can remember something he said. Uh, if, if your blueprint is that by the age of 40, you were supposed to have or going to have um, a $6 million in the bank and you're going to have a, a beautiful relationship and you're going to have 2.3 kids in other words, and you have this car and that car and you're going to live in this location <clears throat> and you're not there one or four of those things aren't, aren't where they're supposed to be. So now your life conditions do not match the blueprint that you set for yourself. You're going to be unhappy and being positive about it can put a nice spin on it. But until you reframe or redirect the idea of your blueprint and allow yourself to change or change your life conditions to match that blueprint, you're never truly going to be happy. Do you believe that? Let's find out. Uh, let me know. So that's your challenge. Find out where you're at in your life. Uh, find one area that you're unhappy and fix it. <laughs> I know, right? Over the weekend, just like that. Nah, that's all I'm talking about. Map out a plan to change something about it, okay? Um, and if you want some help, contact me. I'll, I'll help. I'll walk you through it. So that's what I do. So that's our that's our challenge for the day. I hope you're having fun with this. If there's anything you'd like me to talk about or would want to share with me, get a hold of me. Uh, tell me on here. Let's Let's talk about it. Let's share it. Let's have some fun. Being positive is a state of mind for me. It's a way of speaking. It's, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of looking at things. Am I positive every second of the day? Absolutely not. Is that a positive statement? Yep. It's, an, it's, a, it's a recognition that I have the opportunity to reframe or adjust what it is that's in front of me. Now, am I negative? Define negative, okay? Do I notice things that aren't perfect? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I let them get the best of me, I think, just like everybody else does, um, for a second or two. And if I'm around other people, um, does it come out? As unhappiness, sure, emotions show. Um, given the opportunity to turn it around, I'll do it really quickly. I will. If I'm in a good state of mind, which I try to be in a good state of mind all the time, um, it doesn't take long to make it positive. So I got yesterday from you guys, I asked for jokes. Nobody answered the question either, I don't think. Nobody, nobody, unless I haven't seen your email yet. I've been pretty busy, which is good. Um, but uh, uh, Amy Bowser, are you on here? I think you're on here. What do you call a pig thief? She said it was a hamburglar. <laughs> so that was a joke I got. Got a couple of videos of cats fighting each other um, that made me laugh, made me smile. I like that. Uh, don't send me a bunch of cat videos. <laughs> we got two cats of our own, and they make a mess. It's fun to watch. Um, but I'm still looking for good jokes. If you want to want to tell me a joke, I love to laugh. Okay. So day 13, be positive challenge. Um, I gave you a big one today, and <clears throat> it's not, if you look deep into the challenge, let me explain to you why I did what I did to you, um, your blueprint, your life conditions, and an area that you're not happy with. Sometimes looking at areas that aren't perfect, we find opportunities to change and opportunities to teach. 
teaching for me is just as important as changing. As I grow, I know it's selfish and, and maybe egotistical to think that I can help other people by my life changes, but I try, you know, and I know in my life, people have tried to help me with their experience. You know, I don't do that. I did that. And this is what happened. And generally I never took the advice at face value, but I would always make that mistake <laughs> anyway, go ahead and do it, make the mistake. And then look back and go, you know, dad told me, or, you know, I watched mom or, <clears throat> or, you know, Sifu said that, but I did it anyway, <clears throat> and I learned my own lesson. That's just me. <clears throat> I don't recommend it, um, but I don't not recommend it. You know, I've got a lot of life lessons that way. So find an area in your life that you can you can change or you would like to see some changes in. Um, map it out. Go back to your goal at the beginning of this challenge. Uh, be positive. Define what it means to be positive. Get clear on how it looks to you. Map out a plan of things that you would like to have happen, see happen, know, learn, all the way there. And let's see if we're still on track. All right. Happy Saturday. Saturday. Um, happy 13th day of July. I got to get up this morning and run a little bit late because I made breakfast for Gigi, my granddaughter, and my wife. So I normally get up before them, way before them and and make breakfast just myself and come sit out here with you guys. <clears throat> but today I got to make breakfast for them too. So uh, they're in there eating and I know my wife's watching in the back room. So <laughs> have a great day. I love you. And I will talk to you probably from the road tomorrow morning. Now it's Sunday. I don't know if you guys want to wake up early or not, but I'm going to be on the road really early. So I'm going to see if my wife will hold the phone and I don't know if that's safe. It may not be safe. If you don't hear from me early tomorrow, you'll hear from me in the afternoon. <laughs> okay. All right. Be positive. I love you. I'll talk to you later.